In this video, we are going to uh, take a look at micropipe pets and do a little bit of micropipe petting. We're going to look at uh, four different uh, micropipe petting techniques uh, forward, reverse, uh, repetitive, and whole blood. First of all, let's go ahead and just talk a little bit about um, micropipe pets. In our laboratory, we use uh, Eppendorf pipe pets, these are air displacement pipe pets. Air displacement pipe pets are probably the most common. Uh, micropipettes that you're going to come across in the clinical laboratory. Uh, just uh, here we have one that is has a yellow top and that is has a volume of um, excuse me uh, 10 to 100 microliters and then the larger ones which are blue this has a volume of uh, 100 to 1000 microliters. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go ahead and uh, just take a look at uh, one of our one or two of our micropipe petters, um, and just talk about the parts of it. Uh, the first thing we have is the uh, plunger, and this is what we draw up and expel uh, our specimen with. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about it later, but the uh, plunger has various stops which come into play when we're doing the various pipetting techniques. Uh, this particular micropipetter is uh, adjustable, so here it has a meter on top and um, we can adjust it. So for adjusting this one, what we're going to do is we're going to gently pull up and there'll be a little click and then we can adjust it to what we want here. And you can see there's a little ha there's a, like a comma there. And basically, on this particular micropipe header, this is the 10 to 100. This is 100.0 microliters. Now, we're going to go ahead and just put that back into place. Now, with our, uh, our larger one, uh, this has a little bit, little different system. You have to push this button on the side, and then you can turn and adjust it to what you want. And then we have another one that's just a fixed volume. It's just 1,000 and there's no meter of any kind or any buttons or anything to <clears throat> push on it. So whenever you're adjusting your uh, micro pipe headers, make sure you do it very gently and certainly don't force anything that doesn't seem to be moving. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, talk about the different techniques or let's start in on the, on the different techniques. Um, but before we do that, I just want to uh, talk about uh, <clears throat> loading up our micro pipetter. So each micro pipetter comes with a specific tip. And to put a tip on, what you do is you give one firm push down and it's on. Okay? So on this particular model, the way we eject it is we just go ahead and push all the way down until it comes off, right? Now usually we don't um, eject those into our the palm of our hand we would take them and eject them into a biohazardous trash. Now it depends on your facility but by and large uh, micropipette uh, tips are not considered uh, sharps and therefore don't need to go into the uh, sharps container. However you should always consult the facility that you're doing your clinical rotation in <coughs> or working in to see what their procedure is on that or their policy is on that. Okay, so uh, as far as loading it up, as I got off course a little bit, one of the things that we don't do is this. We don't need to jam it on there like that. We also don't need to do this, you know, making sure we get a nice tight fit. No, just once, one firm push down should be good. And we should always inspect our tip after we've picked it up just to make sure that there aren't any uh, irregularities or any defects because those will, those could very well affect uh, the amount of volume that's drawn up and, and then affect the accuracy of our uh, pipette, micro pipette. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, go to our first um, technique, which is uh, forward pipetting. And this is probably the most common uh, technique that's used in the clinical lab. Uh, it's used uh, with uh, aqueous solutions, things that have a consistency or viscosity similar to water, although it may be used with uh, serum and plasma. But once again, uh, always check with your facility to see what their policy is on that. Okay, so before I told you I was going to talk about the different stops 
in uh, on a, on our micro pipettes. So on my PowerPoint, when I consider this the open position, then we have first stop, second stop, and then on this particular one, there's a third stop, and that was the, that's the one that ejects the tip that we looked at before. So open position, or some uh, sources will call it the ready position. First stop, second stop, and then third on this particular one is eject. Okay, so we're going to use this uh, blue uh, liquid here for our pipetting. And uh, let's see here. <coughs> I'm just checking to see what I've got it set, it on, set on. It's on 100 microliters. So what we're going to do is before we even put the uh, pipette into the liquid, we're going to take it down to the first stop and hold it there. All right, we put it in. Now our micropipetter needs to be straight up and down. Tilting it in any way is going to affect the amount of liquid it takes up. Okay, so what we uh, do then is... Oops, uh, let me start over here. I got a little bit out of the the camera field of view first position into the tube and then we're very slowly going to let it go up okay we take it out we get a Kim wipe we wipe the top now make sure you in any way do not touch the tip because that will wick out some of the liquid and that will affect uh, our uh, pipetting. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a clean glass test tube. We're going to put it in. We're going to tilt the tube a little bit and then touch the pipe micro pipette tip to the side and then we're going to go one, two, and then you take it out and this now you can eject the tip. Okay, now uh, one thing, when you're moving the plunger, when you're going down, when you're going up, please do it gently, slowly, right? Uh, do not do this. When you are drawing up your sample, do not let it click up like that because that's going to create erratic suction and you're not going to get a proper uh, draw of your sample. Now when we start using the more, or pipetting the more viscous samples like whole blood, it's important that you do it slowly and you don't rush because those things, those uh, samples take more time to go up and down in the pipette tip. Okay, let's go on to uh, repetitive pipetting, which means we're going to pipette uh, a single sample more than once into different tubes. Okay, so let's get a tip here. All right, so for this one, open position, one, two. I'm going to put it just under the surface of the liquid. Slowly release. Okay. Wipe the outside. Okay, now I have my first empty test tube. I'm going to put it in the bottom, tilt the tube to the side, and now I'm just going to go to the first stop. One. Now do not release the plunger. Okay, the plunger is at first stop. Now you're going to go back into your original tube and slowly release. Take it out. Wipe. Second empty tube. Down to the bottom. Tilt. Down to the first stop. Hold it. Okay, back to our original tube. Back up to open position. Wipe. Third empty tube. Down to the bottom. Tilt a little bit. Down to first position. Okay, now we've got a little bit of sample left, and we're just going to go ahead and throw that away. So that, that's normal for repetitive pipe adding at the very end to have a little bit left in the tube and we're not going to use that. 
Okay, let's go ahead and go on to uh, reverse pipe padding. And reverse pipe padding is used for a more, um, let's say, viscous samples, for example, like serum or plasma. <coughs> As I mentioned earlier, some laboratories are, uh, will just use forward pipe padding for uh, uh, plasma and serum, serum but uh, just refer to their policy or procedures about uh, what they do when you're in that facility. All right. So here's our, our uh, this is serum, or I'm sorry, this is plasma. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down to uh, second, okay, one, two. We're at second stop, we're going to put it in. Okay, take it out. All right, now I can see in the tip here that there's something wrong. There's either foam or air bubbles or something right so whenever you see foam in the pipette tip or maybe some uh, air bubbles um, something is is wrong so I'm gonna go ahead and get a new tip here and I'm going to re pipette okay so one two Okay, let's go ahead and wipe. Okay, down to the bottom of the, of the clean tube, tilt it, and then we are going to go first stop and stop there. Take it out. What's left in the tip, there should be something left in the tip, that can just go in the trash. And that's it for that one. Okay, our final technique is whole blood, which uh, speaks for itself. We're going to be using whole blood. Now, whenever we're using whole blood, we should have a properly uh, mixed sample. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix that up. Okay, now I really have to stress with the whole blood that you don't rush uh, because, it's, uh, because it's so thick, it takes more time to get drawn up and more time to come out. All right, so... We're at the open position, first position. Okay, then we release to the open position. Do not take the tip out from underneath the liquid. Back down to first position. Back up to open position. Take it out. Okay, wipe the tip. Okay, we have our empty tube here. So down to the bottom, we're going to go first position, second position, and then we're done. We take it out, release, and then we're going to go ahead and eject that tip. Now you can still see, you can see that there's still a fair amount of blood left in the uh, tip of that uh, micropipette tip there. So, um, it, depending on the procedure, you may need to rinse that out. So, you know, re refer to the specific procedure or policy uh, for the test that you're running and generally how your laboratory uh, handles that situation. Okay, that's it for uh, micropipettes and micropipetting.